Welcome to your bilingual space Connected. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I am connecting with you from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I am honored to share this time with all of you and I am also excited to connect with friends from all over the world. Friends that have something interesting to share with us, something to teach us and why not to inspire us with. Always remember that you can not only see us through the IBAYALA channel, but also you can see us and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our channel on YouTube. Today, I dedicate the show to a creature that does not have the best fame in the world. Some of us tend to smash them when we see them, others like to take them outside carefully and to those people I say thank you. We are going to learn about the world of spiders and to do so we are going to travel to Australia an amazing country which fauna is famous for the presence of striking marsupials and monotremes. When we think about Australia, normally we think about kangaroos, koalas, dingoes and whatnot. But did you know that they also have a great deal of colorful, fuzzy and dancing spiders? To tell us all about it, we are going to connect with Michael Doe who finds himself in Woi Woi, New South Wales, Australia. Before we dive into Michael's experiences, let's meet him. Michael is a 45-year-old amateur photographer living in Australia. His passion is macro photography, where he mainly photographs the uniquely Australian peacock spider. He has a love of photography and animals, which started when he was at school. He even had his own darkroom and developed black and white photos. He started Project Maratus, among other friends, about four years ago to research and then promote education about peacock spiders. For him, it has been great to show these wonderful creatures to children and hopefully encourage them to appreciate their environment and to get out and have a look for themselves. It is my pleasure today to introduce Michael Doe, who is talking to us all the way from Australia. This is our first connection with Australia, so we are especially excited and happy to have him here. Michael, welcome to Connected. Oh, as you were telling me before, you held a job, but you, what you also do on the side is all of the photography and videos that you do with all of these uh, creatures, beautiful spiders. So let's go ahead with the first question. Tell me, how did you find, how did you found that you love uh, to photograph spiders? How did you find your passion for them? Uh, I was into macro photography, so taking photos of all sorts of insects and invertebrates, and then came across a little peacock spider in our local reserve. So it's just this little tiny spider, beautifully coloured. Started taking photos of those, and then once I found the first one with my friend, we wanted to find some more. So we started looking for them. There was eight described spiders when we started and we started going across Australia looking. Uh, we discovered 10 new species so far and it's just become a passion. So from just macro photography in our local area, now we slowly traveling Australia, taking photos and, and talking to, to children and uh, small groups who are interested in in insects and spiders in particular, and just telling them all about these these little spiders. Our spider says that peacock spiders, the males are only in colour after their final molts, and when they're coming up to breeding, like birds, they are 
brown or gray and then they they molt and they're in these beautiful colors and it's only now springtime so it's when they start to dance for the females and mate and then they will die the females will live a little longer but there's a a small window in during the year where they're actually lots of males in color and you can go out and photograph them right so tell us how let's say you you're gonna say okay today i'm gonna go look for them so how long does it take you since you leave your house do you have to travel far do you have to get in the woods how how long does it take you until you find one because they are very tiny they're small very small what do you do is there any any way you can call them or i don't know how how does that work for you well the, you you could go down our local little reserve and and you could find them if the sun's out and it's not too hot they'll they'll be abundant but um depending on the species we just traveled 10,000 kilometers looking for them so we, we took three weeks off work and off we went and we discovered three new species in that trip but um wow. so it, it, we can travel huge distances or as little as like a just down the end of the road so depending on the species and so forth um really depends on how far we travel right Tell us about the Project Maratus. How how did you get involved? How did the, all the ideas started? Well, through Facebook, I was putting up pictures of peacock spiders and an entomologist from Western Sydney University contacted me and said, where are you finding these spiders? And I gave him some locations. He then came back to me and said he, he found these spiders there really unusual and where he studies behavior in bees for work he was just really captivated by these spiders behavior and how unique they are he asked me would you like to do any research on them wow and i've had no scientific knowledge previously he said look you you do have knowledge you with all the photography you've done and you understand the creatures and so forth That's all you really need. So we formed Project Meritus, a little not-for-profit group. Um, so if I sell a photo and I sell a couple here and there, all the money goes into Project Meritus just so we can use that to educate children. We do a lot of little talks and so forth, as well as doing our field trips and looking for, for new species. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just one of these little things which has grown and grown. I see, and I am sure it's a beautiful work to actually be able to talk about this species. So tell me, um, okay, so he contacted you because he saw your pictures, the pictures that you public on social media, correct? Yeah. Okay, so what have you learned from like, before, right, pre previous learning from him? from actually observing and taking the pictures. You see the videos and you basically see them dancing. <laughs> so what happens there? What is, what is happening? What are they doing? So in the wild when you observe them, the, the male and females are, will be going about hunting because they're a, a, a predator spider. But when they do notice each other and they get eye contact, The, the males will start to wave its long third leg, getting the female's attention. When he's, when he's got her full attention, he'll raise his abdomen, open up these beautiful colored flaps and start to do his dance. Now, if his dance is to her liking, she will let him approach and eventually they'll mate. But if his dance isn't up to scratch, she can get bored and leap away, or he could start to dance and she sees him as a meal um, if she's more interested in, in feeding than actually mating. So, or if they've previously mated, they, they'll just be hunting. I see, so if they don't find the female, doesn't have the no, dancing, no, we, can, we don't see the colors. Yeah, so then the, 
also there's a lot of things happening with vibrations. So they through the sticks they're dancing on, they're putting little vibrations through when they're tapping their palps, and the females feeling those. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on which we don't fully understand. Um, but there's there's a few people working on all that at the moment. Right. And what other um, characteristics you observe? throughout the time about how they live and where they like to stay. Where do they like, where do they like to stay? If it's throughout the year, is this winter and, and summer? Is there any particular time of the year that is better to go find them or easier? Well, spring's our best time to go looking for them because the males are in color. Um, through winter, they tend to be a little bit dormant. Uh, so they're, they're still about, but it's cold. They're not in color, and you'll find them in the leaf litter and, and so forth. Or if it's really wet and cold, they'll cocoon themselves up and they'll stay in a little cocoon till that weather starts to clear up and they'll come out and feed. Right. So, yeah, they, they, they like nice weather. Nice weather. Are they loners or like they mate and they take their, their path, they go away, or they stay together? Um, you find areas where there's quite a few in each area. So you over a, a few square meters, you might find um, 10 to 20 individuals. Oh, I see. So but a square meter of land for them is massive when you consider they're only four mil in size. Right. Yeah, And um, tiny. They are hunters, correct? They yes. eat insects and stuff. Do is, is there any other animal or insect or species that hunts them? Are they a prey for any other type of living? Uh, spider wasps. So there's a little wasp that will put a, oh, it's eggs onto them and that little skinks, lizards will eat them. Right. So they are not poisonous for this type. Are they poisonous at all? Um, the, venomous, they, they can kill small invertebrates. So any little flies or anything like that, they can, they can kill, but totally harmless to humans. All right, because we are probably, we are humongous for them, correct? Okay, so let's go back a little bit to the project Maratus. So on this project, you guys um, study and collect uh, information about the peacock spider only, or are there any, any other spiders that you also study? No, j just peacock spiders. There, there are so many spiders in Australia, it's um, easy to get off track. So we, we're staying with the one species. There's, there's lots of beautiful spiders here, but um, just with the behavior of peacock spiders and the colorful, how they're so colorful, they appeal to children. Um, a lot of people who don't like spiders really don't mind these in particular. So they're, they're a great invertebrate to, to break the ice. Right, because it is like, um, you know, when sometimes you appreciate, you are in the wild and you appreciate birds, you know, they're colorful and they're beautiful. But it's, it's weird to see because you are not used to, to see this type of colors and this type of behavior on spiders. Usually here, like on the Amazon, we have like these big spiders. They can be very, very scary, <laughs> scary looking. But when you, when you get to see a tiny one that is colorful and you know, the little eyes and everything, they look so beautiful. Yeah, they are quite cute looking um <laughs> yeah compared to your your big tarantulas and or our, our funnel webs so but they they are a, a lovely spider right so tell project maritus what are what are the the principal uh goals of this project besides having more um, or gathering more knowledge about this about these guys. What else do you guys pretend to do with the project? Uh, really, we're, we're just looking at distribution, the ecology, um, and where these spiders fit in 
to the habitat, Australian habitat. So we've, we've been slowly mapping them, finding new species, and just looking at the, yeah, the, the ecology and how they fit in. And why they are so different to other spiders, where their their behaviour, their mating behaviour is so advanced compared to a lot of other species. Right. And on the big spectrum of peacock spiders, let's say how many how many types are how many of different peacock spiders you find on on the group so far? There's now about seventy described species. Oh. And that's still growing. So five new species have just been discovered in the last month. We've discovered three and friends of ours have found another couple. Oh, wow. So it's grown, it's grown. And the more people like myself, amateurs, who are just interested with, like into photography, are getting out there and, and finding new species. So it's, um, it, it's happening very quickly and it seems to be a... Lots I of people see. want to get involved and find them. And um, how, let's say, you find a, sp a species, right? How do, what makes them different among all of the peacock spiders? What are the, the difference that you can say, okay, this is one type and this is another? How does all the, the categories work? How do you guys find that out? Well, you can visually see the difference with the, the colors, the sizes, the, the way their the sh their fans are shaped. But there's a few uh, taxonomists who are working on it. We work with the Western, uh, Western Australian Museum and the Queensland Museum. So there's a few women who work there who are taxonomists and we give them the spiders and then they do the descriptions and actually name them. So we, oh. we kind of the, the raw data and, and that, and they're the, the ones who are doing the, the real science behind it and writing in, in like the, the work for the journals and so forth. It is definitely a team effort in order to get to know more about our environment. Michael, I love to hear the stories you're telling us and moreover to learn a little more about these little guys. We are gonna go to a fast cut now. People at home, stay connected. We'll be right back with more Michael Doe from Australia. Welcome back, connected people, and thank you for remaining connected. We have the last question for Michael. And Michael, I will ask you to tell us all of the work and all of the knowledge you have gained so far. How do you feel this work and what do you do impacts the world in any level or in any way? Um, throwing pictures out on social media, um, the biggest response I've had back is people who really didn't like spiders now don't find them nearly as repulsive. So um, people have got a little bit more tolerance and probably not going to start to spray everything. They're going to think about things before they bring out the poison and, and spray. And also when we've done shows and talk to children hopefully we've changed a few kids minds and they're going to go into the bush with a whole different idea of what there is to see it's not just kangaroos bouncing through there's a whole lot of interesting things that are all happening in the undergrowth and if you take your time and look around there's just so much to see and if yeah if we've changed a few minds about their environment i think we've done a great job that is a great message because not only to make the kids or the children see around, but also get them out there. That is one thing that is becoming harder and harder throughout the years. So definitely when you see a video and you see a picture of these beautiful things, for sure it makes you go get to go out there and, and find them. Michael, I think the work that you do is great. Since I saw it on the internet, I thought it was fascinating. And I want to thank you and all of your team, all of the people that participate in a way and, and wants to be a part of this. I am thankful for your time and for everything you do. Please, I'll leave you a space for you to say hello to the audience and also to share your social media information. Go ahead. 
Hello everyone, lovely to meet you. I hope you enjoy the show. If anyone's interested, they can come and see our work on Project Maritus on Facebook. We've got a page there where we publish our photos and what we're doing, our trips and so forth, and any discoveries that we're making. So look, thank you very much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, and until next time with me, a big kiss all the way to Australia. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. There is always a lot more to see, to do, and we can always change our perspective about something, just about anything. If we only take the chance to listen, to learn, to appreciate, we can find a way to coexist among a species in peace. And this advice goes for all kinds of situations, especially among us humans. I will see you again in seven days with a new topic and a new guest. If you know about somebody that cares and does something positive for the world, for people, for animals, shoot me an email, let's meet up and let the world know them. Write me to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Stay connected everyone. Until then with me, goodbye.